Hey everyone. I see some people joining. Hello, good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. Let me, there we go. Just wanna get the questions box open. Awesome. How's everyone doing this morning? I guess, or this afternoon, I'm in Ohio. So it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Some of you though, I know it is morning time. So good morning or good afternoon. I'm just gonna give a few minutes and let a few people jump on. I know we have, I think 250 uh, signups today for this webinar. So I'm so excited. Awesome, I see some people jumping on. So as you are tuning in with us this morning or this afternoon, I would love to know where you're joining us from. So if you don't know me already, my name is Samantha and I'm the Artistic Director with Aqua. Again, I'm so excited to be here for this webinar, but I would love to know who you are and where you're joining in from. So as you jump on, feel free to leave me a comment in the chat box. Let me know who you are, where you're joining us from. If you're here in Ohio, it is rainy and gloomy this morning, which I'm not complaining because we definitely needed the rain. We've had a drought for quite some time, but I would love to know where you are. So in the comments, drop where you're tuning in from this morning. And then a second thing, I would love to know what you are looking forward to in this webinar. So today we're discussing everything there is to do with our keratin fusion system. And I will actually be doing a demo of the keratin fusion system. However, I would love to know what you're looking forward to in this webinar. So let me know who you are, where you're tuning in from and what you're looking forward to. And then secondly, we do have a Q&A box in the webinar. So there is a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. At the end of the webinar, I will leave plenty of time to answer all of your questions. Some of the questions that may pertain to the specific thing we're talking about in the webinar at that moment, I probably will stop and answer them in the moment. But if you have a question, please ask them in the Q&A box. And like I said, let me know where you're tuning in from in the chat box. So let's see. I see quite a few people jumping on with us. I have not saw anything in the chat. So if anyone can just let me know in the chat, can you hear me? I haven't got any, any responses yet, which usually never happens. So I would, oh, it says the chat is disabled. Okay, let me see if I can enable it. Um, Sharana, do you know if we can enable the chat? Maybe. Thank you, Sierra, for letting us know. Oh, okay. The chat box is now enabled. There we go. Thank you, Sierra, for letting me know that. Awesome. Okay. So I see, oh, hi, Darlene. Hi, Darlene. We have Terry from Fort Lauderdale, Michigan, Cleveland. I see we have Cleveland here. Pennsylvania, more Cleveland, Charlotte. Ah, oh, hey, Vanessa. New Jersey, oh, all over the place. Canada, Wisconsin, from North Canton. Hi, Anna. I know you're, you're pretty close to me. Pittsburgh, so I'm actually from Pittsburgh. So thank you guys all for joining from my hometown. Whitney, awesome. I love it. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I see some people saying what they're looking forward to learn, how to better have placement with density. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So all over the place. So those of you that are tuning in from the West Coast, thank you for joining me this morning. I know it's early where you live. So, cool. And like I said, I just, if you're just tuning in, there is a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. So I would love for you to ask any questions that you have in that questions uh, box and I will be sure to answer them either throughout the webinar or recap them at the end of the webinar. So the question I always get in every webinar, will I get a replay of this webinar? Absolutely you will. So you will be getting an email with the replay of this webinar. So if you happen to join in a little later, or if you have to sneak out a little earlier, you will get the replay. So no worries about that. And I'm very excited to discuss everything there is to do with keratin fusion. So let's jump right in. How many of you have used our keratin fusion system? Give me a hand, a hand raise in the chat box if you've used our keratin fusion system. The hand, hand raises, who's, who's used our keratin fusion? Okay, now who has, this is your first experience of keratin fusion. 
Anyone else give me a heart if this is your first experience with keratin fusion. Oh, I love that. We have some new keratin, new keratin babies in the house. Just got certified. Congratulations. Awesome. Oh, lots of new keratin lovers. Oh, I'm so excited. So excited for this. So like I said, this is more of an informational webinar. This is not a certification necessarily for keratin fusion. However, if you are new to keratin or if you're advanced with keratin fusion, this is gonna be great knowledge and great education for you to take back with you either for filling in your guest's hair with low density. Maybe you're unsure of where to place them, how to place them. Um, can I cut the keratin fusion bonds? Can I not? You know, everything that goes into that. So I want to make sure we answer all of those questions here today. So we're going to jump right into what is keratin fusion, okay? How many pieces come in a pack? What's the weight of the packs? What are the lengths that they come in and everything that uh, entails with keratin fusion? So with that being said, our keratin fusion, you see here's one pack of our keratin fusion application. Our keratin come in three different lengths. So you have 14 inch, 18 inch and 22 inch length with our keratin fusion. Each individual pack has 25 pieces. So if you see each individual pack, has 25 pieces per pack, okay? The weight is roughly um, 0.75 grams per individual piece, okay? So roughly 0.75 grams. So a little under one gram per individual piece, depending on the length, that will determine the weight, right? So 14 inch is a little less than 18 or 22 inch. So roughly each pack is 20 grams, give or take, depending on the exact length that you're working with. So with keratin fusion, in order to complete a full head of keratin fusion, right, meaning you're adding length and fullness with keratin fusion, on average, you will use five to seven packs of hair, okay, five to seven packs, seven being your guest with very thick, very dense hair, maybe they have a really heavy weight line you need to diffuse, that would be more of your six or seven packer, okay, and then on the other end, you have guests that may need four or five packs to complete a full head if they are very fine, low density hair overall. Okay. And then we know with any extension system, some of your guests will just wear it for fullness. Okay. And for me, I will say that's most of my keratin fusion clients wear keratin fusion for just fullness and density throughout the sides and their low density areas. Yes, I do have guests that wear full applications of keratin. Absolutely. However, what I'm going to demonstrate today and my favorite way to use keratin fusion is on your guests with very low density throughout the sides, right, throughout their perimeter, throughout their temple area, and the guests that say my hair doesn't grow on the sides, right? Anybody have that? Guests that say oh, my, the front hair just doesn't, just doesn't grow. Anyone? Raise a hand. Anybody have, have your guests that say that, right? We know the hair grows. We know that's the most fragile hair on the head. We know that that is where your guests overwork their flat iron without heat protected, right? So essentially they're breaking all of that hair off, but we now have a solution for those guests who maybe with other extension systems, you're not able to create that density and that length on the sides, right? How many of you have guests wearing a full head of weft, right? Hand tied weft, machine weft, and you can only get so close around the hairline. So with those guests, you're really cutting a heavy perimeter in the front. You're angling them really deep on the sides and they just cannot get that length that they're looking for on the sides, right? Maybe the same thing with tape and extensions. You're using single-sided tape around the hairline and on the sides. However, you just can't get as close as what you're looking for. That is where keratin fusion is a beautiful system to create that extra density right around the sides and around the perimeter that no other system can. So we're going to discuss how we create smaller bonds with keratin fusion if necessary and just really hide those bonds around the hairline. So like we mentioned, full head applications, roughly five to seven packs depending on how dense the guest's hair is and how much hair you'll need to achieve that look. Okay, so when it comes to the keratin fusion system, the guest will wear the hair for on average four to six months. Okay, four to six months before the hair needs completely removed and new hair applied. 
So with our keratin fusion system, we do not do any rebonding or any retipping. We uh, put all new hair in every application. So when I say four to six months, that's a full bond. So one full bond, meaning the bond has not been cut. I'm gonna grab one bond here. So one full bond that has not been cut, okay, will last four to six months if maintained properly, okay? Now, once you start cutting the bond and breaking down that bond, once the bond is cut in half, so we can actually take this one full bond, cut it in half, okay? So I can take this one full bond using my bond cutting pliers, hold those up here, my bond cutting pliers, okay? I can actually cut this bond vertically, directly in half. But once I do that, I've now created two half bonds. We call these micro bonds. So I've created two micro bonds, cut in half. Now, once I do cut this in half, the time of wear is cut in half as well. So instead of four to six months, I now will be getting on average two to three months wear out of a half bond because there's less keratin involved. Okay, so let me take a, another bond. Okay, take another full bond. I can actually take this full bond and cut it into thirds as well. So I can create a baby micro bond, cutting this bond into thirds. And once I do that, you do get a third of the wear time, okay? So you can see, you can absolutely create such small bonds with our keratin fusion system. And just think how invisible that is going to be in the hair. It's a very, very small piece, roughly, I'd say 0.25 grams, so a quarter of a gram of hair total. And that can be nearly invisible in the hair. Now, the question I get often, can I cut the top of the keratin off? Absolutely, you can. So I can absolutely take the tip of the keratin, cut that off as well. But just remember, the less keratin on the bond, the, the least amount of wear the guest is going to wear their bond, right? There's not quite as much um, points of attachment for it to last in the hair. So remember, the less keratin, the less it's going to last in the hair. So when it comes to our keratin fusion system, what makes us unique, right? What makes our keratin fusion system really stand out from the rest? And we all know the hair quality first and foremost, right? You all are here because you know and you love Aqua and you love our hair quality and our two-step hair process technology, which really makes us unique and allows for the longevity of the hair. However, with our keratin fusion system specifically, what absolutely sets that apart is the bond itself, okay? The keratin itself. So we use an Italian keratin, 100% Italian keratin. So what that means is there are no fillers in the bond whatsoever. There's no, you know, nothing else except pure keratin, an Italian sourced keratin. So what that means to you and your guest is the bond is very, very strong, okay? Very, very strong bond. It is a hot bond meaning we'll talk about our, our melting point, but it's a, hot, it's a hot bond, it's not a warm bond, and it's very, very strong, which is different than our cylinder system. So some of you, raise your hand if you've used our cylinders, which they're commonly known as I-tips, right? Our cylinder system, the tip of that cylinder is Italian keratin as well, okay? Now, yes, we do not melt the cylinder system, right? We use a cylinder or a bead to attach that system, but the tip of that system is Italian keratin as well. However, that system is a soft, durable tip that allows the system to um, completely morph and bend into the bead or the cylinder and then be reshaped back to a cylinder again. So bend and, and circle, flat and, and circle back around, um, allowing for our cylinder system to have crazy longevity because it's very flexible and durable. Okay, now with our keratin fusion, it's a completely different type of Italian keratin. It's very, very strong, hard, and durable. So what that means for you as a stylist is you don't have to do a lot of working of the bond, okay?
Okay, as long as the bond is applied properly, it's going to be strong and have longevity and last in the hair for that full wear as long as your guest is maintaining it properly. Okay, so with the systems, um, I see a question saying, why would you need to cut the top off the, off the bond? Great question. So you absolutely do not have to. You actually do not have to cut the top off the, of the bond whatsoever. However, um, there are stylists out there that specialize in keratin fusion, right? Maybe they've used other keratin fusion uh, brands and they're wanting to switch over to our keratin fusion and ours may be longer in depth than what they're used to. Okay, so if they do cut maybe the tip off of the keratin bond, they have a little less keratin, so it's not quite as long, right? Maybe they're working with a much shorter keratin bond, so less attachment. Uh, they definitely can cut the tip off of our bond, okay? So very good question. It's absolutely not necessary, and I do not do it all the time. Every now and again, I do. The times that I find I will cut the tip off of the bond is if I'm really trying to hide like baby microfusions in the fringe, right? Has anyone created a fringe with baby micro bonds of keratin fusion? Give me a hands up if you have. And if you have it, I encourage you to really try it out. It's beautiful. Or if you're trying to extend a money piece, because anybody did that with keratin fusion. So maybe you did a full application with keratin or another system, and you really are needing to extend the length of a money piece. The less keratin on the bond, the more invisible it is. But remember, the longevity will slowly be less with less keratin. So absolutely, it's more invisible with less keratin involved. However, the longevity is not quite as long. So that would be a reason why I may cut the top off of the keratin bond. So very, very good questions. So with the keratin system, a few tools that we're going to use for the application, you will need your keratin fusion gun. Okay, our keratin fusion gun looks like this. Okay, so our fusion gun is in Celsius. Okay, so you'll see that it heats from 80 degrees Celsius up to 220 degrees. The optimal temperature for us, for our keratin fusion, is 200 degrees Celsius. So I'll hold the button on and click until I get to 200 degrees Celsius, and I'm going to let that heat up. So a few benefits um, to our keratin fusion gun, the tip is Teflon, okay, it's a complete Teflon tip, so non-stick. Right, we know that keratin will stick just in general to anything. However, it's easily wipeable. It's not going to completely stick to the Teflon tip. And also it heats the same temperature inside and out across the entire black tip. So very beneficial if you are applying your keratin bond and you just need to do a quick smoothing of the bond from the outside. So you'll see, I will do that during the application, slightly tap and smooth the outside of the bond just to ensure I don't have any seams or, or any um, unevenness or roughness on the bond. So very lightweight. No, I'm at the salon. I, I was afraid that this is happening. Our doors are locked and people are trying to get in. Every Monday it happens, like we're closed. We're not open today. Um, okay, anyway, we're gonna keep going. So with the Teflon tip, like I said, you can easily smooth the outside of the bond just to ensure that there's no roughness or um, no ridges on the bond instead of completely reheating every time. So super beneficial and it's really lightweight. So you can see it's one to two pounds max, very, very lightweight, very small, and it has a very long cord on it. So you easily can take it anywhere that you need to go. So someone asked, what's the safest way to clean it without ruining the Teflon? Um, that's a great question. So the easiest way to clean is before you completely turn your gun off, while it's still warm, I would take an old towel or maybe paper towel and just wipe the keratin off. Once it is cooled down, you can use just a little bit of alcohol on a towel and wipe. I would not spray directly on the um, gun itself but I would just wipe around the outside, okay? Awesome. All right, I'm gonna set that aside and I'm actually going to grab my model here and we'll get started with the application. Come on over. All right, Emily's coming right on over.
All right. Okay, so we put this cape on. This is Emily. She will be our beautiful model today. And Emily's actually wearing two rows of 22 inch hand tied weft. So you'll see this cape on here. There we go. So she's wearing two rows. They've been in for maybe two weeks. Two rows of 22 inch, beautiful hand tied weft here. Actually, I'm gonna have you sit up for one second and move just a smidge closer. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Emily's one of the stylists here at my salon. So, as I mentioned earlier, my favorite thing to do with character infusion is apply them with another system, right? In conjunction with another system, just to add density throughout the sides. So you can see I here, I clipped up the top of her hair. She's wearing these two rows of hand tied weft. However, she has these shorter pieces around her face that we cannot put weft that close, okay? So what I'm gonna do is apply carriage infusion throughout the sides just to create a little bit of extra density and a little bit of extra length here to fill in her front area, okay? So what we're gonna do is, let me grab my phone. See, a few questions here. Will I go over removal? Yes, Vanessa, yes. At the end, we will go over removal. And someone asked, will we go over maintenance? Absolutely. Uh, we will do a quick recap of maintenance. Now, prior to any carriage infusion application, just like any system that we are using, we always want to ensure that we prep the hair thoroughly with our prep shampoo. Okay, so two to three washes with our aqua prep shampoo, no conditioner, no product on the hair, super important with carriage infusion because you do not want the bonds to slip. Okay, we want a very, very clean squeak, squeaky canvas. So Emily's hair is very clean, ready to go for the application, prepped, completely blown dry. It's nice and smooth for me. And we actually are going to be applying a few different color bonds in her hair just to fill in the sides here, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a full bond first. And the color that I'm using is 18 over 22 balayage. So you can see it matches her very well here. Her end color is a mixture of, I think she's wearing 1820 or 824 balayage, 1822 balayage, 1822 duo tone, just quite a few colors of weft going on in here. Um, I think maybe a four over 22 rooted. So quite a few options of color. And I'm, I want the brighter tones to be around her face. So we're going to use 1822 balayage. And I'm actually putting in 18 inch because I'm going to be slide cutting and blending this anyway. I'm not going to leave these pieces a full 22 inch. So it's a little silly to put in 22 inch if you're going to be cutting off um, the, the bottom anyway. So when I'm applying my keratin fusion, I will need my fusion disc, looks like this, my keratin fusion disc. You'll need just a few single prong metal clips. So I click here. When you're applying the, your carriage infusion system, you want to create the same density in the bond as the bond you're applying, okay? And just like our weft application and our cylinder application, we want to create rounded scoop sections, okay? So rounded scoop sections, we don't want any over direction into the bond. Just give me just a smidge. And I want to create I want to match the density of hair that I'm taking and putting in the bond with the density of the bond, okay? If I have less hair that I'm taking for the attachment and I'm adding more weight to less weight, it's going to pull on her hair, okay? And if I have too much hair, I'm absolutely going to have, if I'm adding too much hair in with not enough hair in her bond, it's going to slide out. So with that being said, we wanna make sure that we match the density. So um, first I'm gonna start with a full bond, okay? You can see this is one full keratin fusion bond. 
So this is roughly 0.75 grams. I'm actually going to create that same density. I'm gonna take just a little bit higher of a section. Now, I would actually not, on Emily's hair, it's very fine. I would actually not apply full bonds here on the side. I would only apply micro bonds. So what I'm gonna do is apply a full size bond, apply a few micro bonds, and then the end, I'm gonna show you how to remove, and I'm gonna remove the full bonds because I don't want her continuing to wear this full bond. It's just a little too big for how fine her side area is, okay? So if you have questions, like I mentioned, um, if you're just jumping on, please put them in the Q&A box. I, can, I have the Q&A box open. I will make sure to answer all of those questions at the end. Um, and you will be getting a recording of this if for some reason you missed the beginning. I'm gonna tuck your head down just a smidge to make sure they can see, there we go. So I'm gonna take my scoop, okay, quarter inch wide by quarter inch deep roughly, because that is the density that I need to place in my bond. Okay, so I'm matching roughly density for density. So I took a scoop rounded section, I elevate just to ensure I have a rounded section. Now, why don't I want a square section or a triangle section? Both of those shapes have tension points and weight points. If I was taking a square, I would over direct the corners into my section. If I was taking a triangle, I would over direct the point up. So both of those reasons is why we only use our rounded scoop sections. But I'm not using my tail comb, I always let it live in the hair. First, I take my section I just isolated. I open my keratin fusion disc, slide the hair through the center opening of the disc. And this is where I use my single prong metal clips to clip the disc in place. So I like to use two, one on each side, clip the disc in place and slowly slide the disc down to where the section of hair coming through my circle opening has zero elevation. So slide it down to where it's laying completely flat to her scalp, okay? Now I always say you wanna be able to read the aqua logo facing you. Can I do it the opposite way? Yes, however, if you always ensure you're using the same side of the disc, have the aqua logo facing you. So I'm gonna take my section of hair coming through my keratin fusion disc. And I like to like ribbon it through my fingers. So hold at very low, almost zero elevation, place it across my top three fingers and use my pinky just for stability, okay? I take my keratin fusion bond. And again, I'm using a full bond and I place the top of the bond about roughly, I'd say an eighth of an inch below my circle opening. So if you guys can see here, I'm gonna push your head a little bit closer. So you can see I have the top of the bond at the bottom circle opening of my keratin fusion disc, okay? I'm gonna grab my keratin fusion gun. And again, I have this heated to 200 degrees Celsius. Ribbon this through my fingers. Take my, my keratin fusion gun and heat the bond for three seconds. One, two, three. So the first thing that I do is I fold the bond on the right and left. Think of like a bookend. I fold, fold the right over, fold the left over, just to create now that I'm encasing my section, okay? I'm gonna grab low elevation, medium tension one more time. Heat them on for three more seconds. One, two, three. And from the top down, I'm going to roll my bond. Just slowly and gently roll the bond from the top down. Really my goal here is to ensure that the section of hair is not twisting, okay? Notice my left hand is holding everything stationary. My right hand is just slightly, think of like fabric feeling to the right and left, okay? You can use your pointer and your thumb or you can use your middle finger and thumb. Most of you are gonna, going to switch back and forth so your fingers don't get sore. But the goal here is to encase the bond around the section without having a seam. And what I mean by a seam is you can tell where the sides of the keratin fusion bond meet the hair 
and you can see the natural hair underneath. Okay, so I want this bond to be very smooth. I don't want it to be rough at all. And I want it seamless from top to bottom. Okay. Are you folding the bookends forward or back, Annie? So I, what I did is I laid the bond on top and I fold under. So I'm folding the right under and the left under. Okay. So when I take this keratin fusion disc out, you'll see the bond will lay completely flat to her scalp. I can move it 360 degrees, any direction, no pulling, right? I can move it all around and it lays completely flat to her scalp, okay? Again, like I mentioned, there's no seam. So I don't know if you can tell, but you, you'll see this keratin fusion bond completely encapsulates the hair and it's smooth top to bottom, there's no ridges. So I, the biggest challenge when you're first starting to do keratin bonds is really getting that finessing of the rolling with your fingers. So once you roll top to bottom, ensuring that everything's nice and smooth, okay? So this is where if it's not smooth, before I were to ever take my keratin fusion disc off, I could use the outside of my keratin fusion gun and just tap, tap, and smooth it out. Okay, so that's absolutely a possibility to so just tap and smooth it out. Just saw my dog walked in the background. We have a salon dog here. She's hanging out with us here today. <laughs> I just saw she came, walked kind of through the background and was like, hey, what are you guys doing? So one bond complete, okay? One bond complete. Like I said, if you're just joining in, please put your questions in the chat or in the Q&A box. Uh, the Q&A box, I will be sure to answer all of your questions 100% before we jump off today. Okay, so one bond complete. Now, I could either continuously stack bonds side by side the whole way to the front, okay? I could take another section down and place one right over top, or I can leave space. Really, you want to place the bond where you see hair is needed, right? So you can see, I just added a little extra density here right throughout the front. So what I'm gonna do is actually place my next bond. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space, but I'm going to make this a micro bond, a half micro bond, okay? So I take density for density. So if I'm doing a half bond, I'm gonna use the one that I had already cut in half earlier. If I use my half bond, I take density for density here. I wanna be able to read the aqua logo facing me, slide the hair through the circle opening, use my single prong clips, clip it into place, and then slowly slide down until I have zero elevation. So no elevation in that section whatsoever. Cool. I'm gonna take my half bond, so this is the one I had already cut in half earlier. Ribbon the hair through my fingers, as I mentioned, over my first three, under my pinky. Uh-oh, I have a bad feeling UPS is now going to want to drop off our packages. <laughs> All of this is happening. Okay. Okay, I have to pause for one second. UPS is gonna bang on the door in one minute. I'm just gonna prop it open and let them leave our packages. I apologize. This is what happens on Mondays when nobody's here. I'm sure most of you totally get it, right? You're closed on Mondays, nothing ever happens, but if they happen to see you in here, which there's a huge window, they definitely are like, oh, I'm gonna stop and drop off their packages or I'm gonna try to go in there. Is anyone working today? And I, I always joke, nothing happens when nobody's here, but as soon as you're trying to do something, everyone runs on in. Okay, so 
Over my first three fingers, under my pinky, ribbon it through. I'm using my half bond. Place that half bond right at the bottom of your circle opening. Now, when you're using a half bond, it's a little different. I actually do not have to do the first fold, okay? So there's not enough keratin to fold to the right and left. I'm just placing it on top and rolling. So making sure I'm isolating any extra hair, low elevation, lining that keratin bond up, heat for three seconds, one, two, three, and rolling. So I'm gonna roll from the top down, making sure my left hand is holding it completely stationary, smoothing it out. And this is where I can use the outside of my Teflon if I do need to do any extra heating. So if I, do, if I need to, somebody asked, can I, once you roll, you don't need to reheat. No, once you roll, you don't, unless you feel as if you need a little bit more smoothness. So I can, I can take and reheat one more time, just slightly, and then roll, okay? But what you don't wanna do is continuously overwork that bond to where you've heated it up so many times and we call it growing. So you don't want the bond to grow deeper than what the depth already is of your bond. So you can see the bond is roughly, we'll say a half of an inch deep. You don't want it to grow more than an extra quarter inch. So I don't want my bond to be heated so many times that it ends up getting inches long, okay? So I do see another question. Can you leave the bond flat? Okay, so great question. And yes, there are um, keratin infusion systems out there where they do leave the bond flat. We at Aqua do not. We recommend for there to be no seams on the bond. So again, meaning your bond completely encapsulates the hair. When you do leave the bond flat or there are seams, water and product can, can get down into the bond. And that's where you end up having the bond slip and slide out. So we wanna make sure there's no seams or um, nothing can get into that bond. So after Emily goes home, she wants to ensure that she does not get her hair wet or washed for at least 48 hours, okay? That ensures the bonds stay nice and hard and strong and are completely watertight because if there's a seam and if she, she wets it too soon, then yes, uh, they can slide out, okay? Once you leave the bond, cool. Just make sure I wanna answer all those questions. So you can see the difference between a full bond here and then a micro half bond. Again, making sure it's nice and smooth. I can move it in any direction. She pulls her hair back today. She's not gonna have any tension challenges whatsoever, okay? So I'm gonna, next I'm gonna do a third bond. So a baby micro bond. Again, this is the one I had cut into thirds. And I'm gonna do this even closer to her hairline. So if Emily was my client and I was doing keratin on her, I would actually do uh, half and third micro bonds all the way around her hairline here, just to ensure that they are almost invisible. So again, match density for density. I just want a small section of hair, that rounded scoop section, I'm gonna take my fusion disc, isolate the hair through the disc, clip it into place, slide my disc down. So there's no elevation whatsoever. And so I, I see the question, um, I'm not, I'm starting away from the scalp, so there's no tension, yes. So like I said, if I were to place my, my disc here, I'm like, turn your head towards the camera for me. Can you see the elevation of this section here, right? Complete elevation. So I wanna slide the disc down to where there's no elevation whatsoever. And that typically ends up making the bond live roughly an inch away from the scalp. Okay, so no, it doesn't look like much. We can turn back, but you can see this bond actually can fit my entire finger 
above the bond and the scalp. Okay, that ensures that there's no tension whatsoever. If the bond lifts closer to the scalp, you're not going to actually be able to pull it up to the right and left 360 totally, and that's going to cause tension on the scalp. Okay, and it actually will cause tension the entire wear, not just in the beginning. So I'm going to ribbon this hair through my fingers here, place the bond on the section, and then again, dropping it to the bottom of my circle opening. The disc will protect the keratin from seeping onto the rest of the hair or too close to the scalp. So I'm going to heat and I'm just going to go straight into rolling. One, two, three and straight into my roll, okay? So if I needed to, I can tap and heat again. I could tap with my Teflon tip, okay? A lot of times, once you're in the groove and once you're really, you know, doing quite a few keratin with these micro bonds, that one, that one heat and roll is perfect, okay? So now you can see, my baby micro bond here, just how small it is, but how invisible. You cannot tell where that bond starts, especially if she pulls her hair up, completely invisible in the hair, okay? So like I said, I would actually continue to apply either half or third micro bonds in her hair. And these ones right around the face, that somebody had asked earlier, why would I need to cut the tip off? And that's exactly why, okay? So if I was working really close to her hairline here, these really fragile hairs, I would actually cut the tip off of the keratin to make half the amount of keratin that there is in depth. So they're nearly invisible. So essentially just the smallest itty bit of keratin attached to hair. And again, she would only be able to wear these bonds for maybe two months, okay? They're not going to last a long time, but they're gonna create a huge impact in her hair. Okay, so the last thing I wanna show you guys before I demonstrate removal is actually how many of you have saw online, um, there are some videos floating out there where you can take two different colors of keratin, okay? Two different colors of keratin fusion hair and attach them both into the same bond. Does anybody know what I mean? So I have, I'm holding here color number 22 and I am holding 1822, okay? Color number 22 and color 1822 balayage. And I, what I wanna actually do is create more of like a duo tone. And let's say I realized, dang it, I didn't buy a duo tone color or I need two colors that do not come in a duo tone. Okay, but I want those two colors in a duo tone in one bond. Are you with me? Give me a, give me a thumbs up or a hand raise if, you, if you're with me. So I'm gonna create a duo tone with these two bonds, but create them in, in one bond. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is get this prepped and ready to go to apply this as one bond. So what I'm gonna do is cut each of these in half with my bond cutting pliers. So I'm gonna cut each bond in half. Okay, and only use half of each bond. So I cut each one in half, only use half of them, okay? And some of you are probably like, yeah, definitely. I know exactly what she's gonna do. And I'm going to use my keratin fusion gun and tap the bonds to melt them together. Okay, once they're together, then I'm going to go ahead and apply it as one full cool bond. So I just take the top one and make sure that they're lined up and just lightly tap, tap, tap. Once you start to see them melting, use your fingers and form them into one bond. Completely form them into one bond. Right? I like to let them cool just slightly before I were to put them in the hair. Now you noticed I just lightly tapped to create them into one bond, okay? So now if you're looking at this, you're like, that looks like our 1822 Duotone. Absolutely it does. But let's say like, again, I wanted to use J99 and 1B, right? I wanted to make a Duotone out of like our 
beautiful um, red, violet, magenta, and uh, level, you know, three, right? You absolutely can do that. But again, you just want to lightly tap and create one bond out of them. Okay. Somebody's asking, using your client as an example, what if she wanted to keep her root color the same but have the ends stay blonde? Can we color the root of the fusion since they don't come in rooted colors? Uh, will that keratin bond take color? Great question, uh, Denise. So she's asking, let's say she wants, we want the root color to be dark and the end color to stay blonde. The actual keratin bond itself will not take color, no. Um, it is a very hard bond. It's not porous, so it's not going to absorb hair color. Now the hair will, yes, but the bond itself won't. Um, so I would recommend to uh, maybe do this duotone um, fusion of your two keratin fusion bonds together. That would be an option or just, you know, rooting the top of the bond. But again, the tip itself is not going to be dark. Um, we do have, you know, quite a few balayage tones, and we are launching some more colors in our keratin fusion system. But again, the tip itself is is not going to um, color. That's a great question. Okay, so I'm actually going to put this one a little bit towards the back since it's a bigger bond, and you'll see how I can create a beautiful highlight here with the color 22. So again, matching density for density. I have a full bond, so. 0.75 grams of hair. Isolate this section in my keratin fusion disc. All righty. Ribbon this through my fingers. Okay. Lay the bond on the top. And again, you're, it's going to feel a little bit bigger because you did melt it slightly. Slide it down just below your circle opening. And I'm going to do the double heat method where I fold. So I heat once, three seconds, fold to the right, fold to the left. Okay, so now I have more of my book end. I fold it under to the right and under to the left. I reheat for a second time, one, two, three. And from the top down, I roll. So starting at the very tip, making sure that that is nice and smooth, and I slowly roll down. Again, making sure I have low elevation, okay? I am pinching at the top, rolling, and then if necessary, use the outside of my Teflon tip and smooth it out. Okay, so you can see what this looks like encapsulated with both colors. So we have our color 22 and then our 1822 duotone in there as a full bond. Cool. So like I mentioned, you can, with Emily's hair, I definitely would apply more of my micro bonds that are thirds and halves around her hairline. And I would do a few rows of them all throughout the sides here, but you can see just with these few pieces, how much density we created, right? Just this little itty bit of density. And if I take all of this down, she has very fine hair and they're still completely invisible in her hair. So if I take her hair down here, you can see that beautiful extra density. You can see those pieces that I just applied. However, I'm pretty close to her hairline, right? I'm pretty high up. With that movement, you cannot see any of those keratin bonds. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do is show you how to remove. Okay, I'm gonna remove the bond that I just placed in. In the meantime, I have a few questions. Just to reiterate, you are using zero elevation when applying them. So slide the protector down so there's no tension before applying the keratin. Yes, Annie. So zero elevation. So I put that keratin fusion disc. I slid it down to where there's no elevation. My left hand held the hair all the way to the scalp. My right hand, I'm, I'm right-handed. So I use my right hand to slowly roll that bond. Okay. 
Um, question over here, is it safe to color or lighten someone with a full head of fusions already in place? So that's a great question. Um, I would just recommend to make sure that you stay away from the keratin fusion bonds, okay? We wouldn't wanna get any color or lightener on the bonds. So um, maybe not a global application. Uh, maybe that would just look like a partial retouch and their hairline and around their um, face um, area. So it really just depends what it, what you're looking for, you can, you know, absolutely with highlights, if you're needing to put um, highlights in foils, you totally can do that and just work around the bonds themselves. Okay. Um, do you ever angle these or are they always parallel to the part line? Casey, that's a great question. So when I'm doing full applications, you always want to stay completely um, horizontal. So I work in horizontal sections, making sure the hair stays vertical. But when you get into your smaller baby micro bonds, absolutely, you can angle them around the, the hairline and the face, because you are taking such small sections, they're only going to be in the hair for up to two months max. So you don't have to worry about any challenges, you just want to ensure that you are matching density for density, you are staying, you know, that full distance away from the scalp and you're able to move in all directions. Okay, so you absolutely can angle them. When I'm working in my full section, I do always do them horizontally. So great question. All right, so when it comes to removal, let me snag my remover here. Let's see if I can Right, so we always want to use our express remover. Okay, our express remover. And I want to spray my express remover directly on the bond. So our express remover is an alcohol-based remover. It comes in our bottle, it looks like this. I take my express remover, spray it on the bond. I let the bond sit, okay? The biggest challenge I see with keratin fusion removal is they want to just go in and start breaking up the bond without using the remover. So the remover is what actually breaks the bond down. Okay, your bond breaking pliers aid in that removal. So your bond breaking pliers look like this, they're perforated. The breaking pliers aid in the removal, the express remover is what actually breaks the bond down. Okay, so spray the express remover, let it sit for 30 to 60 seconds, take my bond breaking pliers and I crush the bond. So I break it, break it up, crush it top to bottom, flip it to its side and crush it top to bottom, okay? After I break it up once, I take my remover one more time, spray it on the bond, okay? Then I move on to my next bond. So I, I like to spray maybe a whole row, maybe you spray three or four at a time, just to get the remover working, and then use your bond breaking pliers to break down that bond, okay? So after another 30 to 60 seconds, you have then, maybe went and broken and crushed two or three bonds. You come back to your first bond, break, break. And I will tell you when the bonds are fresh, this bond's still soft. We've not waited your 48 hours, right? It is a little bit more difficult to remove because the bond has not dried out and it has not completely hardened. So I'm probably will have to do a little bit more crushing than what I would with a bond that has actually been in there for a few months, but I break the bond. If I, I, I like to hold on to the natural hair, grab a hold of the bottom of the bond and slowly tug. If it does not go anywhere, you need more remover, okay? I need a little bit more remover to break down that bond. Let the remover sit, do its job again, move on to the next one, start crushing a few more, and then I slowly, I'm spinning this bond, breaking it all down. Like I said, again, this is a fresh bond. So once it's soft, it's not the easiest to remove. However, it's possible. So this is a great indicator of, let's say I put a bond in and it's not exactly where I need it to be, okay? So you put the bond in and you're like, oh crap. Ugh, all right, that's not where I want it. Or she comes back the next day and says, this one bond is in my, you know, it's a problematic bond. I'm really having trouble hiding it. You can absolutely remove. So all that I do is hold her natural hair, okay? I don't want to just aimlessly tug. Hold her natural hair, 
in the bottom of the extension, slowly slide it out. It should slide right out and you should see zero natural hair in that bond, okay? Now, yes, there will be natural hair once the bond has been in her head for two, three, four, five months, right? So much hair at that point has shed. So there will be shed hair stuck in your bonds, but you can see I just removed that bond. I slid it out completely and I did not pull any of her natural hair out. So I cannot stress enough when you are doing your removal, spray your express remover. Now, a lot of questions I get, can you use glide remover? Glide remover is not going to break the bond down. Okay. Yes, it's, it's an, our oil-based remover. We use it with our tape and extensions. It will not break the bonds down with our keratin fusion. Only express remover will. Okay. So I like to remove in full rows. So I would spray my row, break them all down, go back, spray them again, break them again if necessary. Typically after one break and two full sprays, they all just start sliding out. Okay, so the removal process is very quick and easy with the express remover and the bond breaking pliers. Okay. Thank you, Emily. I'm going to slide you back over to the side. Thank you. Awesome. So I want to make sure I answer as many questions as possible. So how often do these need to be maintenance? Sarah, that's a great question. So when it comes to the maintenance of the keratin fusion extensions, as I, I kind of discussed this earlier, that really depends on what size bonds you're using. So full bonds, they need to be replaced every four to six months. Half bonds, you get half the amount of time, right? There's half of the amount of keratin. So roughly two to three months. And then your baby micro bonds, those third micro bonds, they will get roughly one to two months wear out of them. It really just depends on how quickly their hair grows and how well they're maintaining them, okay? Um, and we say maintenance, Sarah, that means that once the hair has been used, it is not reusable. So you actually have to throw the ha this hair away and get new hair every four to six, two to three or one to two months, okay? Um, Danae, do you have time to go over how you charge for an install since it's different? Okay, that's a great question. Um, Pricing, yes, that is a whole topic. And I actually, um, we're hoping to do a webinar based upon you know, how to price extensions properly. So I would just give you a recommendation um, to one, do your research, see what stylists around you are charging, see what your market demands. But we'd say on average, when you are applying keratin fusion extensions, it is two to $6 a bond. It really just depends on your market. Okay. Um, on average, it's like two to six dollars per bond. I would not recommend to charge per bond. All right. I wouldn't recommend to charge in that way. However, if you think about it's 25 pieces per pack, yes, the cost of the hair is significantly less than when you're working with, let's say, hand tied weft extensions. Yes. Right. So um, it's going to take you a lot longer to do this application than tape and extensions or even weft extensions if you're really used to doing that. So I'd really recommend to one, see how long it's gonna take you, um, determine how much the hair cost and make sure that it is worth your time overall, okay? Uh, Teresa asks, how do they take care of it at home? Great question, great, great question. So their at home maintenance, actually does not differ from any other extension system, except they always need to make sure they wait that 48 hours after their application before they get their hair wet, and then ensuring that they're brushing their hair very thoroughly twice a day with our aqua boar bristle brush, really making sure each individual bond is separated. So lifting, ensuring that they are combing and brushing out in between each bond. Um, and I always say throughout the day, run your fingers through your hair and ensure that each bond is separate, okay? The biggest challenge of keratin fusion extensions is the bonds grow together, right? As the hair grows from the scalp, the bonds just will all want to form as one if they're not brushing and maintaining properly. And that typically happens from lack of brushing and not blow drying, okay? So we never, ever, ever let our hair air dry with any extensions, especially keratin fusion. They all want to lump together when they're wet. So ensuring that they're always drying, especially always drying before they go to sleep at night and making sure that they are thoroughly brushing. Okay. 
um, only using their Aqua aftercare maintenance products. So we love to send every guest home with the essentials kit. If you're not sure what the essentials kit it kit is, please look it up. Ask your local sales rep for the essentials kit. It's a beautiful aqua black bag. And in that bag comes all of their take-home products. So their aqua shampoo and conditioner, their multi-benefits leave-in conditioning spray, which I call liquid gold. If you know me, raise your hand if you heard me say it a million times. I call that product liquid gold. It's my absolute favorite. It's their one-size-fits-all product for their heat thermal protectant, UV protectant from the sun, detangler, anti-humectant. They can spray it on wet or dry. We recommend twice a day, every single day, mist it on their hair. It will add a ton of moisture to their hair, but the key to all of our wetland products is there's no protein, okay? Zero protein. If you've never taken a class with us and you're not sure how we process our hair, we pack our hair full of as much protein as it can hold during our two-step hair process and any added protein on the hair will overproteinize it. So our shampoo and conditioner, sulfate-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, protein-free, which is one of the most important aspects, and then sodium chloride-free. So sodium chloride, no table salt, it's safe on any, if they have any smoothing treatments or keratin treatments done to their hair, and it's safe on their hair color. So in that bag, like I mentioned, our essentials kit, they get the shampoo, conditioner, our leave-in conditioning spray, and then their aqua bore bristle brush. So I'd recommend no matter what extensions system you're using, every single guest leaves your salon with the essentials kit and their first application. You set them up for success and that will set you up for success, okay? If you send them home and just give them recommendations on whatever they can use, they're going to go and use something. You have no idea what's in those products, right? And you know that as, as a company at Aqua, we can only guarantee our hair if they use our aftercare maintenance products, okay? We did our research. We're not a wet line company. We're not here to sell you dry shampoos, hairsprays, all these random products. We know that these specific wet line products work best for our hair extensions. Okay, so that is absolutely how we recommend they maintain their hair at home, right? We recommend using low heat on their extensions, so 350 or less on all of their hot tools, um, and ensuring that, again, they're always pulling their hair back when they sleep, when they work out, when they do any wind activities that's gonna cause their hair to, to tangle and mat, and just ensure that they are always separating those bonds. I cannot stress enough. Okay, so I will let you know, I here at my salon, we have quite a few extensionists here. We actually, after this webinar, have another extension class with our new talent stylists. And every single guest that leaves my salon takes home an essentials kit. We work it right into the cost of their extensions, okay? It's non-negotiable. I tell them they get it complimentary with me. I work it into the cost. And every guest here, we set them up for success when they go home the number one sold product in my salon. Number one, we are a very big salon. There's so many of us. Number one sold product, Aqua Multi-Benefits Leave-In Conditioner. I know my guests use it properly when they come back and buy a new one at almost every single move up. Like uh, Emily, that's, Emily, that's wearing it first thing she does. She comes into the salon in the morning, sprays her hair with Aqua Leave-In Conditioner. A lot of us spray it on our hair afternoon throughout the day. We spray it again at night. Our guests maintain their hair the absolute best uh, than anyone that I could ever tell you because that leave-in conditioner adds so much moisture to their hair. It's going to protect their hair from the sun. I mean, I, I can go on forever, but it's absolutely the best product they can use on their extensions. So I love Maria said, this is why I love this company. Absolutely. It's why we love you, Maria, because you are recommending the best thing for your guests to use. Okay. So... I just want to make sure that I've got all the questions answered. What's the placement around the head for Kate tips is the placement the same when placing machine weft extensions. So when you're placing your keratin fusion extensions, the um, placement is essentially the same. Yes. And that you're always placing them in rows. However, you can start a little lower in the hairline um, than you can with weft, right? We talk about weft being four fingers up from the, the nape. With keratin fusion, use your tail comb. You can go as close as what the tail comb allows because they're much smaller bonds, okay? So maybe around the hairline, you do use those micro bonds, but they do go in the same row sections. Um, how do you explain the difference between choosing hand tied and this method for a client? 
So Tiffany, when choosing keratin fusion, uh, it definitely comes down to lifestyle overall, right? So it comes down to what is their lifestyle? Do they need to pull their hair up consistently? This is a huge system for guests who wear their hair up very often. Okay. They're wearing their hair up every day. They're wearing their hair up maybe at the gym. They're very invisible in the hair. So that would be a great uh, reason why you might choose character infusion. But another reason is just maintenance. If the guest does not want to come back in and see you for four to six months, this is the perfect system for them, right? When you're applying um, hand tied or machine weft, the guest does have to come in and see you every six to eight weeks. So this is a much longer wear time and they're not coming back in quite as often. Okay, so that would just be two reasons why, why your guest may wear keratin fusion over like another system. Um, a question says, is there a place in the head where the bond shouldn't be placed? That's a great question. The only place the bonds should not be placed is where they're going to be exposed. So use your tail comb, determine how close to the hairline you can get. And when I say use your tail comb, do the tail comb test, right? Slide the tail comb around the hairline. Once the tail comb disappears, you know you're safe to put extensions there, okay? So that's the only place keratin infusion cannot be applied. You can really apply them anywhere in the head as long as they're going to be covered completely by hair. Um, we already answered, we do not reuse the hair. And Tiffany, do you recommend this method for fine hair? Absolutely, absolutely. Again, the finer their hair is, the smaller you may want the bonds, right? You may want to um, cut the bonds in half or into thirds, or make sure you're always using density for density. So if you're doing full bonds, make sure you're pulling enough hair um, in that bond, okay? Um, all right. I think blow drying and flat ironing for clients, is there anything they should be careful of? Sarah, great question. So she's saying blow drying and flat ironing for the clients, is there anything we should be careful of? Yes, um, you wanna make sure that they're not isolating the very hot heat on the bonds, right? Just like you saw, I have my keratin fusion gun at roughly 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So if they're using too high of heat, they could melt and reheat the bonds and the, it will just cause the bonds to slide out. Okay, and the same thing with their blow dryer. If they're not moving the blow dryer around consistently and they're reheating the bonds, they absolutely could remove the bonds. And then we know if the heat is too high, they could just scorch there. So we wanna make sure that they're using lower heat and they're constantly keeping it moving. All right, what, sh how, what should our goal be for five to seven packs of hair, Julia? Um, time frame. so that, that's tough because you know when you're first starting, this is definitely going to take you much, much longer. I would recommend if this is something that you want to get faster at, that you want to really specialize in, a good goal would be one to two minutes per bond. Okay, so one to two minutes per bond in the application. Um, you know, I've been doing character infusion for many, many, many years at this point. I'm usually averaging 45 seconds to a minute per bond. So I would recommend if that's the, you know, a goal that you're looking for is to really get your timing down, I would shoot for one to two minutes per bond um, overall and just really get your speed up there. But again, it doesn't, speed at the end of the day isn't the number one goal. We really want to ensure that we're doing very high quality solid bonds because once that bond is in the hair, I mean, you saw it's brand new, right? It just, it took me longer to remove it than it did to apply it because the bond was so new. So if you're needing to remove the bonds when they're fresh because they are not placed properly, that's going to take you much longer. So just ensuring that you're putting the bond in accurately, practicing on a mannequin first, I cannot stress that enough. This bond, once it's placed, you're married to it, right? You are married to that bond. You're not dating. You can't just quickly open up a bead and remove it. You guys are married. You're gonna need to file a divorce to completely remove. And you just saw I had to take remover and I had to take bond breaking pliers for that divorce and it took a few minutes. So you wanna make sure that everything is um, being placed properly. And I would recommend to practice that on a mannequin first. All right, so I think I answered all of all the questions that I could see. If for some reason I didn't answer your question, shoot it in now. Um, I will make sure that I answer that and if, you are watching the replay of this and you do have a question, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. Okay, you can reach me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Sharpie underscore J, S-H-A-R-P-I underscore J. There's no E at the end of Sharpie. So S-H-A-R-P-I 
underscore J. Please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can also message Aqua on Instagram. I will be sure to get all of those messages as well. So if you guys have any keratin fusion questions, any extension questions in general, I'm always here for you, whatever you need. Um, we do have a keratin fusion virtual certification class coming up in October. So our next Keratin Fusion certification class, if that's something that you are now interested in, which I hope you are, because Keratin Fusions are such a beautiful system, we have that class on October 3rd. You can visit our website, www.aquahairextensions.com to register for that virtual class. And I would encourage you guys at bare minimum, now that you at least saw the application, to try it out, right? Reach out to your local DSC, reach out to the sales rep that you have in your territory, ask them to order our Keratin Fusion, um, Keratin Fusion kit. We have an intro kit that you can purchase to get some practice hair, all of the tools that you need, and just start practicing, right? That's absolutely what I would encourage you to do on a mannequin. And then from there, you can get certified in October and you'll hit the ground running, be ready to go to do your Keratin Fusion application. Okay, so like I said, please message me if you guys have any questions. If you're watching this, uh, take a quick picture, tag me on Instagram. I love to see uh, all of you guys educating yourselves on this beautiful Monday morning. And I love to see all of your work. So when you do your first keratin fusion extension or your next keratin fusion application, tag me in your stories and in your um, posts, tag Aqua as well. We love to see all of your work. So I'm looking forward to see all the beautiful keratin fusions that come from this. And the last thing that I want to mention, we do have another webinar. So we are trying to do at least one webinar just like this every single month. So if there's something that you're looking to learn, please let us know. Our next webinar is August 22nd, and that is on our tape-in extension system and how to do tape-in move-ups, removals, and reapplications. So that is with one of our educators, Samantha Garland. She's incredible. She'll be doing that on August 22nd. You can register for that webinar. Um, it is another free webinar. We're opening the registration for that very shortly. You can register on our website. Um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in all of our future webinars. So like I mentioned, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. You will be getting a replay of this if you missed the beginning and happy extensioning. I will see all of you guys on our next webinar. Bye guys.